Hi, so in this vlog I'm going to be talking about Street Life and Rose Coloured Boy. Rehearsals for Street Life were very fast paced, mainly because I again was singing for every group. Because of this I didn't have a lot of time to get comfortable in, in any group and stayed quite detached. This worked well for me because it meant that there wasn't a lot of leeway for me to cut out any lyrics or get lazy. It kept me on my toes and helped to improve my concentration and performance energy levels. As a singer, I feel as if I am the glue to the band, the last piece that holds everything together, so that puts a lot of pressure on me to deliver 100% every time. Because of this, I needed to find new ways to keep my performance energy persistent. My vocal lecturer gave me a few helpful tips on how to do this. First of all, performance energy is very similar to everyday energy, only amplified and then focused in when performing. It all starts in the morning and doing very simple verbal and physical exercises go a long way to increasing your energy. Some of these exercises are as simple as stretching and walking, moving every muscle in your body until you feel physically awake. Making time to do this, whether first thing in the morning or late in the evening, will make a huge difference in the long run. So, with my performance energy up, I can enter the rehearsal room with a certain air of readiness, which should hopefully rub off on the other performers. In any profession, you should always aim to turn up with a positive attitude, because it will rub off on everyone else. It's never a good idea to turn up to rehearsals with a bad attitude or a lack of enthusiasm, since it really takes a toll on the other musicians, no matter how they were feeling beforehand. Whilst, whilst rehearsing with my first band for Street Life, we took a few minutes to get set up and work through any niggly bits. For example, any problems regarding the key, any chords that didn't make sense and any structural issues. However, this was very brief as we needed to get as many run-throughs done as, pos as possible before I moved on to the next band. I did struggle with the end of the second verse during the first run-through due to the tricky accidentals, however I got around this by picking out each note and singing them more staccato, thinking more about making sounds rather than singing. I pulled a little bit of inspiration from jazz improvisation and incorporated this into, my verse, into the verses just to give the song more colour. The week before, I spent some time with my vocal lecturer to go over the interpretation of this song. Since it's a disco funk song, the words need to be sung with spunk, almost spoken, again staying away from a legit smooth sound and instead using a more gritty forward sound. The original funk singers of the 70s would usually be dancing while singing, so their vocals would have to work around this. Going into the topic of dancing, in fact, singing funk songs and and um, you can't sing funk while standing still. You, you need to move and incorporate movement into the dancing. You need to feel the music. You can't just stand there and sing it. It's almost, it's, it's almost a, a, it's a full performance. You can't just stand and stand with your mic and expect the audience to enjoy it. You've got to get the audience involved. You've got to really feel the music and enjoy it. And that is, that's so crucial to creating the perfect punk funk performance. Moving on to Rose Coloured Boy, there is a strong link in the interpretation of this song and the interpretation of Street Life. The rehearsals for this song went by so quickly, so it was lucky that I was already super familiar with the genre. Paramore is a band that I have kept up with since 2008 and Hayley Williams is one of my pop rock inspirations. Sorry, going back to the strong link between the inter interpretation of Street Life and Rose Coloured Boy, this is because they are both very energetic and upbeat. And it, back to Hayley Williams, I love the way that she projects and she uses dynamics and vowel pronunciation to make her voice sound so unique. When I was practicing Rose Coloured Boy with the band, I seriously struggled with the bridge section where the lyrics are more spoken than sung due to the speed they are, they are sung at. So, to avoid making any mistakes, I repeated the first two lines twice since I didn't want to be caught struggling to remember the lines and instead wanted to sound confident. There are so many times where I have had to make changes and shift things around for the sake of the quality of the performance, maybe change a few lyrics, change, a, change some of the notation, and I believe there's no shame in doing this. 
if it if it helps the overall performance and it makes the song more you and if it and it helps your performance it's that's what matters at the end of the day it, it's it's not about being completely specific and entirely you know, nitpicky with the song it's not about that it's about the overall performance and how you feel the performance and how you you perform it it was great being able to get back into singing Paramore songs. I really, really enjoyed Rose Coloured Boy. I felt myself slowly but surely slip back into my pop rock voice during rehearsals. However, it did take a lot of concentration, I've got to admit. However, um, especially since many of the other musicians wanted me to use my full belt voice, something which I know as a singer that I do not and should not need for this song. I believe the reason they wanted me to do this is because I had an ongoing issue with my mic not working and therefore they couldn't hear me properly. However, although I do understand what, so I do understand, however, my vocal health comes first and I knew that they could hear me if they just turned themselves down. Like I, I will always put my vocal health first. I will not shout over loud instruments because my mic's not working. At the end of the day, I will never sacrifice. I have lost my voice twice in the past due to unhealthy belting and I've learned my lesson from it and I will not be doing that again and I feel like I have made a lot of progress in working on my say not my chest voice but my just in voices in between my mix my head voice and I feel like I can read I can project very well with that voice and I don't want to go back to using my full chest voice unless it's completely necessary technical difficulties are always going to happen and I think the most important thing to remember when it happens is to not let your own technique and performance energy suffer. Technical issues can be fixed easier than bad technique. On a topic of technique, um, during the recording of Rose Colour Boy, it was suggested to me that I focus on softening my R's and relaxing into the song a little more. This was more important for Rose Colour Boy since it was being recorded in a recording studio. Therefore, the quality of my voice was much more important than volume. Any volume issues can be easily fixed by the sound engineers, which gave me a lot more room to think about the specifics, like my vowel placement, vocal quality, and dynamics. Rounding up this vlog entry, aspects such as performance energy, vowel pronunciation, and vocal sound effects are three of the largest areas of technique I have improved upon in most, I believe. However, performance energy and interpretations of styles are two of the biggest things I think I have improved upon.